Talking with the experts. In episode 570, learn how to scale your business with ease. Richard Walsh shares strategies for growth and focus. Here's the thing. Let's talk about this. So an exit is like the end, right? We get the end. Now, most people will say, hey, I'm, I've been doing this for 20 years. It's time to get out. I'm going to start thinking about exiting. Way wrong time to think about exiting. Okay. I always tell people the best time to, to, to do an exit strategy is before you launch your business. Okay. That's the first best time. The second best time would be right now. Okay. Because what an exit strategy does is, and now keep it really simple. Let's say you want to do this for 10 years. You pick a time. You want to exit for X amount of dollars. I want $10 million for my business. Okay, great. Now you have those two things, you know, when, and you know how much now you reverse engineer. Okay, what do I need to do in my business on a daily, monthly, yearly basis to reach that point? What who's going to give me ten million dollars for my business? Meaning, what am I building that someone would be worth ten million? And that's automation, right? Automation, delegation, elimination. That's those. Three. Talking with the experts. Welcome to Talking with the Experts. This is where we discuss great ideas to take your business to the next level. How do we know these ideas work? Well, it's because we're talking with business owners who are using these ideas. Business owners who have years of experience and expertise. All things business by business owners for business owners. And now, here is your host, Rose Davidson. Hello, welcome to Talking with the Experts. I'm your host, Rose Davidson from rosedavidson.com.au. Talking with the Experts is all about business, by business owners, for business owners. You can find it on all podcasting, streaming platforms and on YouTube. And today it's my very great pleasure to introduce you to Richard Walsh. And Richard is going to be sharing with us how we can scale our business comfortably and the path that we need to take to do that. Now, Richard uh, is the CEO of Sharpen the Spear Coaching. He is a 30-year seasoned entrepreneur. He's the best-selling author of Escape the Owner Prison, uh, The Contractor's New Way to Scale, Regain Growth Control, and Fast Track Growth with loving li- While Loving Life. My goodness, I have to learn how to read. A speaker and podcast host, he's a husband and father of six children, a U.S. Marine, a champion boxer, a black belt, and an internationally recognised steel sculptor. His expertise lies in combining both the strategic and the tactical. He's able to deliver immediate problem-solving results, uh, which is the tactical part, along with strategic long-term implementation of systemization and scalability. With over 30 years in business himself, Richard has embraced time compression, sharing the secrets and strategies that bring rapid and lasting results to the companies he works with. Richard, it is such a pleasure to have you on Talking With The Experts. Welcome. Thank you, Rose. I'm excited to be here. So tell me how, you know, with all of your background as a Marine, a boxer, a black belt, a podcast host, a steel sculptor, how do you find the time to run your business, sharpen the spear coaching? Well, a lot of that's, you know, when you're in business a long time, you get a lot of things done, right? You accumulate over time. So that's where that's at. So all of that behind me, we started the shift into the coaching realm because I started seeing the patterns in business, the bad patterns, right? There's a lot of similar patterns that all businesses, you know, kind of create and they get stuck and they can't scale. You know, they work really hard the first two years, but then next, you know, 10 years has gone by and they've repeated the first two years five times and they wonder why they can't get free. So escape the owner prison was about that. So as I saw that, I said, let's focus on coaching. You know, let's move from that and let's scale a coaching business so I can help 10,000 business owners create freedom, profit, and impact in their business. Yeah, I think, um, it, it is it's important as business owners that, as you say, we don't repeat the first two years over the next 10. And a, a lot of us, I think we do that. We keep making those same errors over and over and over again where, you know, we don't learn um, or we just keep repeating them because we don't know any way better, um, I think, because no one's, you know, been there to help us along the way. So I want to know, um, Richard, why so many business owners struggle with scaling 
Well, I'll tell you, you know, a lot of a lot of business owners, especially your small, maybe even mid-sized, but really your small, that's, if I put a gross revenue number, one to ten million. Okay, let's say you're making one to ten million a year in gross revenue. They're usually craftsmen, they're technicians, they're people who are really good at what they do. So they start a business because they can do it better than the person they're working for. Right. That's the idea. So so they get into it and they're really good. But the problem is they don't know the business aspect. Right. But they get going, but they can't put literally the hammer or the saw down or the keyboard or whatever it is that they're working. They have this sense of control that they're the best at it. If they don't do it, customers won't be happy. This won't go well. This will be bad. And that's where they really get stuck. So they start making more money. They're providing a great service and they're delivering value, but they don't know how to let go to delegate properly. They don't know how to build the business so they can, what I call automate, delegate, and eliminate. There's three things you do in that business. So they don't understand that. So they keep pushing. They work the 60 hours. They work the 70 hours, the 80 hours, um, lose time with the family, they have no freedom. What they lose is all the stuff they went in the business to get, right? So that's that's why i think that's the biggest reason it's one of the main uh, patterns that i see so that makes sense really yeah i think um and, and you know losing the that precious time with family and friends is is um you know not good for your mental health at all um i mm -hmm. believe and it's really not good for overall well-being so you you have to uh Pace yourself and make sure that you're not doing um, all those things that prevent you from, um, you know, the three things that you mentioned was uh, uh, delegate and, and automate. <laughs> the other one and I eliminate. The eliminate is really important. Eliminate. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And and we all and we all I think you're right. We all think that we can do it better than somebody else, and it's it is hard to let go. And how can we do that? How can we let go of the things that we think that we're so great at? What what I what I try to tell the owners when I first worked with them, I said, okay, you're the best. I'm gonna I'm making the assumption. I'm agreeing with you. You're the best at what you do, and I'm glad. I want you to be the best. But if you have someone who's ninety five percent as good as you, or ninety seven percent as good as you, I guarantee you, your customers don't know the difference. Okay, and if you're really concerned, bring that person on, have them start working, take them up the next five or three or three percent right? Get them as good as you so you can let them do it, right? So when they see, the, you really have to show them a path to let go because they, they're they not going to trust someone or they haven't built a business where the people on their team, even though they have people working for them, they can't really succeed well, right? Because they don't, he hasn't, he haven't built out the entire lane for each business. That's where the struggle is in pre-scaling, you need expectations, consequences. You need boundaries, right? They need to know what success looks like today, at the end of the week, end of the month, end of the quarter, end of the year, right? When they know that kind of stuff, that's part of the automation and delegation. Because a lot of people delegate early, Rose, right? Go do this, and they don't know how. And they think they're going to figure it out because we're entrepreneurs and we think people think like us. And they don't, okay? They don't want to think like us. And if they did want to think like us, what, they, what would they be doing? Their own business. Right. So we need to understand we have to build our business to put competent people in a lane that they can run to the goalpost. That's what they need to do. They need to be able to succeed. Right. With that support. So once we can, we can kind of open their eyes to that, because as entrepreneurs, we have blinders on. We have to, we're laser focused on what we do. It's hard to see that bigger picture, right? That 10,000 foot view, as they call it. So that's where we really begin. I become the outside eyes for a company. Because you're not, and I know this, my first 20 years, no help. I didn't help, no one helped me. I didn't let anyone help me. I just knew everything. Okay. <laughs> that's that's the lie we tell ourselves, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we have to, have to be open to that. And that's that's where the process begins. Yeah, I guess, um, you know, having processes and writing them down, um, you know, what's in our head, putting it down on paper is really important when you want to start delegating the work because you can't expect someone to learn a task if they um you know are missing steps along the way and i um some years ago worked for a number of businesses where they didn't have processes in place and i and so as a new person i would write down every single thing that i did and once i became more competent you know, of course then i would add things into it and 
So by the time I left that position, then the next person that took over from me knew exactly what to do. And, um, you know, it was like, I guess, showing monkeys how to, you know, peel a banana, basically. It was just so yeah. simple for the next person. And I think as business owners, we keep so much information in our heads and we don't write it down because we don't think that we'll need it in the future. Right. It's that inner genius, right? We have an inner genius that has to get put down. So what I, there, there's three things you do. So first you have to define the what, what are the job functions? What specifically does this, this role do? And it could be 10 things. It could be 37 things. One thing could be, Hey, every third Wednesday for 10 minutes, you send a report. That's a job function, right? That's in the process, you know, so they know what to do, but then you have to have the how to do it right? That's second column. How do you actually do this work? Okay. Then there's a really important third column that most people skip. And that's the training of the how, right? So you need to create this, how to train a new person, because I like to, this is my saying, everybody leaves. Okay. In business, everybody's going to leave. It might be in 20 years, might be in two days. Okay. Either way, they're going to, they're going to leave, right? So you're going to have to put someone else in the system. So we always put people in the systems, not systems in the people, right? So once you build that and you have the training, that new person comes on the next day after so-and-so doesn't show up and is never coming back, you can get that new person, get them in in five to seven days or up to speed, right? Because we can always increase competence. That's the easy part, right? You can make someone better, but if they don't have the system to work in and succeed in, that's where the struggle is. So how, the what, the how, and the training of the how, that's key. Absolutely. No, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, I guess the next, that would lead on to then, you know, once we've scaled our business and, you know, we've got all those delegations in place and we've got all these people doing all the work that we know we used to do ourselves, why is it uh, so important that we have an exit strategy? Exit is, here's the thing, let's talk about this. So an exit is like the end, right? We get the end. Now, most people will say, hey, I'm, I've been doing this for 20 years. It's time to get out. I'm going to start thinking about exiting. Way wrong time to think about exiting. Okay. I always tell people the best time to, to, to do an exit strategy is before you launch your business. Okay. That's the first best time. The second best time would be right now. Okay. Because what an exit strategy does is, and I'll keep it really simple. Let's say you want to do this for 10 years. You pick a time. You want to exit for X amount of dollars. I want $10 million for my business. Okay, great. Now you have those two things, you know, when, and you know how much now you reverse engineer. Okay. What do I need to do in my business on a daily, monthly, yearly basis to reach that point? What, who's going to give me $10 million for my business? Meaning what am I building that someone would be worth 10 million? And that's automation, right? Automation, delegation, elimination. That's those three things. Because here's how the experience should go. This is my, this is the best world scenario, right? You hit the 10 years, you're looking to exit, you go into the negotiations, maybe you get your 10 million, maybe you get 10, five, who knows, right? Like it's really good. You built a great business. Well, this person gives you a check, you shake their hand, you're out the door, they're in, nobody knows the business sold, right? That's the beautiful scenario because the business is so self-running. And so good, that's what's attractive about the business. So, okay, well, now again, how do I do that? So the further out you're the further away from your exit, the better for you. Because you can build this, right? You can start going, when do I hire the first person? When do I get the second person? When do I increase my market share? It becomes a business filter rose that you can look at because as we gain success, you're gonna get a lot of opportunity floating in front of you. People are going to have a great idea. They have another way to make money. You're going to want to expand the company, but you take that and you run it through the exit strategy as the filter. Does it get me closer to the exit or does it detract from me? If it detracts from my exit, it's a hard no. It really helps you stay away from the shiny object stuff and really focused on the main thing. Now there's some great opportunities that can increase the speed to that. And that's good. You go with those, but we want to use that as our builder. And here's, here's one other component to that. So let's say you are killing it. You're making seven figures a year yourself. You're taking that instant income for yourself. Okay, so we get to the end. You're going to get your 10 million, but what are you losing? Seven figures a year. Okay, so now, oh, what do I do about that? So again, if you're way back in the beginning, you're year two or three in your exit strategy or one, you say, okay, well, my goal is to make seven million a year or one million a year income. Great. Now, when I sell, I'm not going to have that. So what do I need to do? Oh, I need to accumulate income generating assets. 
to create a passive income strategy where I can take that income and keep building that. So now I've got $83,000 a month coming in passively. I, I get my exit, I get my 10, and I still have a million coming in if I don't work again. Hmm. Right now that's, and that's how we get to plan. Right. And that builds that comfort because we're usually the biggest draw on the payroll. You know, that's a big draw. And if you can get to the point where you're not doing that, right, that's an amazing thing. And you can start to invest that money. So there's a lot of elements to exit to a good exit strategy, but that's just a few of them. It makes a lot of sense, uh, Richard, that, uh, you know, to plan, I guess, in the beginning of your business, you plan mm-hmm. your exit um, because, you know, you're not going to be doing it forever. And, and um, you know, when, and you may not, you know, obviously not going to live forever either. So you have to plan for those contingencies for if you are no longer physically on this earth and who's going to run your business and who's going to, you know, take over the, the helm and, you know, what's going to happen to all the money that you've been making. And, you know, those sort of things should also be included in your exit strategy as well because, um, you know, you just don't know what's going to happen. A bus could come, a media could fall down on you. you know, who would know? <laughs> Well, you know, or the economy, sometimes you're forced out of business. In 08, 09, I was forced out. You know, the things crashed. I didn't have the right things in place for my first 20 years. And I lost everything. Had to start from zero. You know, and and even if you get in that position where maybe there's a big shift in the economy and you're, let's say, forced to sell, you're still going to maximize your, 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 your sale, right? Even though it's not the optimal you're not getting crushed. You're not getting 10 cents on the dollar. Maybe you're going to get 60 cents because you built a great business. You built a business to sell. That's kind of how you think about it. I'm building it to sell. Like you're saying, when I plan for these contingencies, where am I at in each stage? That's what the exit strategy is so good about. You know, each stage you're going to be at in the business. So regardless of what happened, like you said, and so many things can happen. It's life. It's just what it is. So with that in mind, when you have an exit strategy, you get a little peace of mind too, because you start to understand the path. Because as entrepreneurs, I call it ignorance on fire when you start. We're just running. We're just, we go, we put the hours, we make the sales, we do what we have to do, but you've got to calm down. There's got to be a point where you're going to, you know, the first two years are the first two years. There's no secret sauce to not working hard. But then you've got to get in the groove and understand where you're going. And now you can make wise decisions. You can bring in the right counsel right? You can get the right coach. You can get the right mentor. You can get whatever you need to get to your exit strategy. So it makes a big difference. Absolutely. And, you know, and that goes, you know, with scaling and and exit, you know, they, this, they go hand in hand because, you know, as you it's right, quite rightly said that you should be starting your exit strategy when you start your business. So, and if you want to scale your business, then your exit strategy should also scale along with you. I think, Rose, a big mistake that people make, people scale, but they don't scale properly, right? That's kind of what we're talking about. Like, what does that actually mean? And the problem is they get people dependent. Okay. They got these great, they they built a great team. Okay. So they got really great people. Maybe they don't have all the systems in place, but they got great people because they're a good leader and people like them and they do a cool product. But the problem is then they want to scale. They start grabbing more market share, but you can't duplicate people. That's where they run into the problem. You can, they can only take on so much work, right? So if you don't build out those systems, those lanes that we talked about, you know, the what, the how, and the training, now that can be duplicated. Now you can go bring the system to the next location, you know, to like a better term, and then plug new people into it where they get up to speed because it's all done. That's how you scale comfortably. Now you understand like you have a repeatable process. If I have one restaurant, I'm not going to turn it into a, it's not going to, I can't sell it as a franchise, right? I have to show that it's been done two times, three times, maybe even four times. Then we can talk about franchise because I have a duplicatable system. The fries are made the same way. The burgers made the same way, right? The milkshake is made the same way at every place, right? That's, that's the whole franchise concept. So think of your business, even though you're not going to franchise, you have to expand. It has to be duplicatable. It has to be proven. Your systems have to be proven. Absolutely. No, I agree. Now, a lot of us work, you know, those 60, 70, 80 hours a week. Why do you think it's important that we only work on the business 5% of our time? Because the goal for 
the visionary, which we'll call the owner or the founder, or whatever term you want to use, our expertise is not usually in accounting, doing payables, okay? Uh, you know, uh, managing people, it really isn't in managing people. We're visionaries, we're founders, right? So I always like to encourage people, look, our goal when they work with me is to get you to your 5%. That's the 5% of the business only you can do as an owner. Only you have the vision. Only you know where this is growing. You understand market share, right? What you want to accomplish. You can reel in the big clients because no one knows it better than you, right? So you can focus on that kind of stuff. You know, Jeff Bezos from Amazon, when they're closing a $100 million deal, he's in the room, okay? <laughs> it's lovely. He's there, okay? It's not like, ah, no. So I'm just saying they need to focus on that. And that takes you from that 60, 70, 80 hours right down to 15 or 20. And the beauty of that is you're focused on what matters. So your team, again, can succeed. They understand the vision of where the company is going. They can support you in that role. And now, what does that mean? You've got your freedom, you have your profit, and you have your impact. You get to go to all your kids' games. You get to mm -hmm. go to the music recitals. You get to see the plays. You get to have date night, right? You get to do that kind of stuff now because you're not chained to your business. You're not that prisoner anymore. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, and we often, well, most of us take it for granted that we we have to be there 100% of the time. And, you know, um, I think we have to lose that mindset that, you know, the business will survive without us as long as we've got the processes and procedures in place that can make the business successful. Yeah, I think I was my first 20 years, I was driven by ego and pride. I'm, I'm winning awards. I'm being selected for this. I'm internationally recognized. I'm, I'm all these things, right? And that was what drove me. And that is a really bad place to be. I like to, I learned a great comparison is about ambition. Ambition is great in the passenger seat. It's never good in the driver's seat. You put it in the driver's seat, you're going to go off a cliff because that's what drives you. So you've really got to tether that. We need ambition. We need drive. You need to exceed, but you've got to understand where its place is. And when you let your ego drive, because you know, like I had billionaire clients giving me advice that I did not take because I don't believe they knew what I did. You know, they're, it's, I, I get to laugh about it now. I go, man, I was a complete idiot because <laughs> they were right on everything they told me, you know, then the collapse came, everything else. So it's just, you, you have to be, you have to be able to accept that help because the help is what's going to get you to the 5%. And once you get there, you'll be like, this is, this is what I started this for. This is what I dreamed of. You know, now I get to truly lead from the very front, from the top. I can see everything and it's, I can see the entire chessboard. I know what's going on now. And I can, I can lead this group of people because, because remember Rose, people want to do good work. No one wants to come and be a slacker. Well, there's there are, the slackers are out there, but we don't have them on the team. But people want to succeed. Just give them the path to succeed and do well. They'll take care of it for you. They'll be happy as long as they know what to do and they can stay in their lane. It's it, That's what's going to give you your freedom. It really is. Absolutely. Now, Richard, I'd love to hear about your podcast. Tell me what it's called and, you know, where people can find it. It's called Sharpen the Spear Podcast. They can find it on all the all the everything from Amazon to Apple to Spotify, it's everywhere. So, uh, Wonderful. but it's great. But we, yeah. And where do you, and how often do you release episodes or is it a live podcast? No, we don't do live uh, yet, but we do two, two a week. We do Tuesdays and Thursdays. Every Tuesday and Thursday, we have a new guest of 30 to 45 minutes. So uh, really, really digging into business. So you, you, you get some really excellent experts on there that they, 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 they can give you some great nuggets. Wonderful. And your book, Escape the Owner Prison, tell me what people can find in that in, in, and, and why should they buy it? Escape the Owner Prison is really about being stuck, right? Well, all the stuff we just talked about, you can get it on Amazon for one, but it goes through the scaling process. So you'll see zero to a million, a million to five million, five million to 10 million. It'll walk you through that process. I weave my story in it, what I did, what I didn't do, right? All that stuff. But it really shows you a lot of fundamentals that, are really overlooked in business, like how you can rapidly succeed by doing the right things, how you can get what you're actually worth because most people are not charging enough, right? Most of us undervalue ourselves. So this really takes you through that journey and shows you what you can do and where you should be. So it's a very useful, we'll call it a manual. It's a manual for good scaling. <laughs> so yeah, I encourage you to get that on, get that on uh, Amazon 
And yeah, that'd be that's it. Wonderful. Well, you can find Richard on uh, Facebook, on LinkedIn, uh, and on his website at www.sharpenthespearcoaching.com. Uh, Richard, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. And I look forward to talking with you again sometime in the future. Thank you, Rose. It's been great. You've been listening to Talking with the Experts, hosted by Rose Davidson. Make sure you have a look at our back catalogue over at talkingwiththeexperts.com and be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss out on any episode. We look forward to your company next time.